Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Trigno again with the second half of the Unit 13 um, test review. This was your test over circles, um, and this is for Geometry A. And you'll find the first half of the test review um, in a separate video. Okay, so number 11. So find the measure of an angle inscribed in a circle if the measure of its intercepted arc is 68 degrees. And this is kind of just testing your vocabulary. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say an angle inscribed in a circle? An inscribed angle looks like this. And when I say that the intercepted arc is 68, that means that this part of the circle from here to here is 68 degrees. And I'm looking for the measure of the angle. Remember the angle in these situations, the angle is always half of the arc. So I just need to take that 68 and cut it in half. Okay, I would do 68 divided by 2 and I end up with 34 which is option D. Okay, um, number 12. Number 12 you have to think to add some things in yourself that they don't really give to you. Um, as soon as I see tangent lines, remember the important thing about tangent lines is that the radius that they meet always makes a right angle. But I see in this picture I don't have the radius, but I can draw one. And you better believe that if I'm giving you a tangent line, you probably need that radius because that right angle tends to be kind of a key piece of information. Okay? So in this one, if I draw that in, I know that angle ACB... So ACB is 84, and then like I was saying a minute ago, the important thing about these tangents is that where they meet the radius is a right angle. So really if you look at this, kind of the big picture here, what you have here is a four-sided figure or a quadrilateral. And remember that for, in all quadrilaterals, there are 360 degrees. Okay, and that's an important fact for you to, to work on tonight if you didn't know that already. So if in a quadrilateral there are 360 degrees, I should be able to take 360, subtract off the 84, and subtract off the 290s, and that will give me what I have left over for this angle here. And I believe when you do that, you come out to 96. And so if that's 96 degrees, that means this angle that I have circled here in green is 96. And that's a central angle to arc AB, which I know I've scribbled over it a lot, but this right here is arc AB, and it's going to match that angle. So my final answer here would just be 96 degrees. Where did my answer blank go? Oh, I kind of wrote over it. Well, there's your final answer, 96. Okay, number 13 is actually very similar to number 10, and in fact, I think part B is exactly the same as number 10. Um, this question is asking you if ON is 12 and QP is 9, what is the area of this triangle here? Triangle OPN. Well, remember that if PQ is 9, then OP is also 9 because they're both radii. And this is a right angle because that's a tangent line. So I can do the area by using the 9 and the 12. And area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, which are the 9 and the 12. And let's see, that's going to be 54, I believe. Yep, so it would be 54 square units. Okay. For part B, let's see what I can get rid of here. For part B, it gives me that angle QNO is 74, so this is 74, and I know this line right here is splitting that right in half, so then half of 74 would be 39, so each of these little pieces are 39. And I guess I can get rid of that 74 now.
Okay, and I know again that these are right angles. Okay, I keep coming back to that. And then I want the measure of arc OR. So really what I need is this little angle right here because that's the central angle that's going to match that arc OR. And this is a triangle which has 180 degrees. Okay, so I can calculate this by doing 180 minus the 39. I'm sorry, half of 74 is not 39. Half of 74 is 37. That's what I meant there. Going too fast for my own good. So 180 minus the 90 and minus the 37 comes out with 53 degrees. And so that means that central angle is 53, which means the arc here is also 53 degrees. And then C, I told you you could skip. Okay, let's take a look at 14. 14 is probably something that instinctively you'll know right away, but you'll have a really hard time explaining it. So here's what we know. I'm going to mark what we know in green. So we know that EHF and EGD match each other. So EHF would be this angle, and EGD match. Okay? And what I want to know is why... I'm going to mark what we want to know in red. Why does DHE, which is this one, match EHF, which is this one? Well, here's what I would see. This first angle, the EGD, that angle intercepts this arc. Okay? And that second angle, the EHF, intercepts this arc. So I know that this arc and this arc are equal to one another. I'm sorry, that's getting kind of messy. Well, this angle then intercepts that same arc. And this other red angle that's kind of buried intercepts this arc. So those two angles, even though they're different angles, they intercept the same two arcs. So here's what my response would look like, something similar to this. First, I would start off by saying that arc DE and arc EF are congruent because their inscribed angles are congruent. So that was our conclusion that we made when we said that this arc and this arc were equal to each other. Okay, then the next step would be to get to this part here. Okay, then I would say something to the effect of the angles, which is what you were trying to find in the first place. Remember, this was your ultimate goal right here. Um, the angles that you were trying to show were congruent are congruent because they intercept those two congruent arcs. So they match up with two arcs that we've already shown to be congruent. Okay, on to the back. 15 and 16 are really using the same type of picture. So I'm going to draw just one picture that will kind of go with both of them, and then we'll come back and talk about 17. So the circle here is that we've got a circle O, which means the center point is O. And then we've got AB and AC that are tangents. And if both of those segments have an A in them, that, that means that A is this point here that they share. And then B and C, it says, are my points of tangency. So B is the point here, and C is the point down here. Okay. And I want to know which of these is not true, and I'm looking at number 15. Well, and like I said, the first thing I would do as soon as I see tangent lines is I would draw in the radii because I know that those radii have to make a right angle. Okay. That's information I definitely know. So then it wants to know which one is not true. Does angle BAC equal 90? Well, from B to A to C, that's not marked as 90. Let's see. And I just want to make sure I drew my picture correctly. Yeah, I would say your answer here should actually be part A, or option A. But let's check through the rest of our options just to make sure. Triangle AOC is congruent to triangle AOB. So for that, I would have to draw this middle segment in to make my two triangles. 
here's triangle AOC, here's triangle AOB. Are those two triangles congruent? We've talked about this a lot in class, and the answer is yes, they are. And you can get that because we have that related theorem that means that this segment and this segment are congruent. We know these two are congruent because they're both radii, and then we've got right angles here and here. Okay, so those triangles are congruent by side angle side. So B is definitely true. Then it says, is angle BOA equal to angle COA? So BOA is this angle here. COA is this angle. Could those two be congruent? Well, yes, because we already showed that these two triangles are congruent. So by CPCF, all of their pieces would be equal to. So C is true. And then D, angle OAB would be congruent to OAC. That's the same type of thing. It's just talking about these angles now. But again, by CPCF, if I already know those triangles are congruent, then these two angles would have to be equal. So the right answer there is option A. Okay. I actually don't like that we gave that to you on the first try because I wanted you to think about all those other ones too. Okay. 16 is going to use this same picture, but I'm going to get rid of some of the stuff here. Let's get rid of this line down the middle. All right, looks like I can't get rid of the line down the middle. That's okay. We can work our way through this. So I'll just change colors on you. Um, it's asking me if triangle BAC is isosceles. So that means I want to draw a line connecting B to C directly. And triangle BAC would be this triangle right here. Is that isosceles? Well, isosceles means it would have to have two congruent sides. And we do know that this side and this side are congruent because we have that theorem that says that if they share a common endpoint, they would be congruent up to their point of tangency. So these two sides are congruent to one another. So this is an isosceles triangle. That is true. B, A, B, O, C is a kite. So from A to B to O to C, is that a kite? Well, let's remember what a kite is. Okay, a kite is a quadrilateral that has two sides where two consecutive sides are congruent. Looks something like this. So these two would be equal and these two would be equal. Is that what we have going on here? It absolutely is. Um, because, as we said a second ago, we already know these two are equal. And then over here, if I were to look at these two sides, which would be the top of my kite, these two would have to be equal because they're both radii of the circle. So B is also true. What about C? A, B, O, C is a parallelogram. No, that's not true. These sides are not parallel to one another. And in fact, we talked when we did quadrilaterals about how kites are not a type of parallelogram. So letter C is the one that's not true. And D just wants to know, is triangle BOC isosceles? So now that's looking at this triangle. I'm really going to mess it up now. Okay, but this triangle from B to O to C, would that be isosceles? And that absolutely would because your radii are congruent to each other. Okay, so letter C is your choice there. Okay, and now let's look at 17. 17 says, um, in the figure, it tells us that PQRS is a rectangle, and angle QPR is 60, and PR is 18. State as many additional facts as you can. Oh my goodness, there's going to be a lot of them. Let me figure out a way to get some space here. Okay, now we're just looking at the figure itself, and actually I might even make that a little bit bigger. Okay, and we're just trying to name as much stuff about this figure as we can. So, and I believe it gave me in the problem, let me take a look here, that QPR is 60. So I know that QPR, whoops, that this here is 60. And I know that this length here is 18. And I think that was everything it gave me. Oh, and that it's a rectangle. Well, let's think about what a rectangle is. A rectangle is a quadrilateral with um, four right angles, is the technical definition. So right there, we can start listing what our right angles are. I would say that angle Q, angle QRS, 
angle S and angle SPQ are all 90 degree angles. And you could justify that two ways. Um, one way is you know that it's, well, at least for angles S and Q, you know it would have to be a right angle because it's inscribed inside this semicircle. This line here cuts that in half. So inscribed inside a semicircle, a semicircle is 180. If you cut that in half, you would get 90. But you also know it just based on the definition of a rectangle. So either one of those justifications would be okay. So if I know this is 90, and I know this is 90, and this up here is 60, then what would these angles have to be? Well, and technically I know this one is 60 as well, but we'll get into why that is in just a minute. But if you add these together and subtract from 180, you've got a 60 and a 90, so what's left down here is a 30. So I could say that angle QRP and angle C. RPS equal 30, because you know there has to be 180 degrees in a triangle. Um, by the way, the reason that I know this one down here is 60, and there are probably a couple different ways you could justify this as well, but I know it's 60 because I know that in a rectangle these sides are parallel and this is a transversal. So this angle and this angle are alternate interior angles, so those are both 60. Really what we have here are um, 30, 60, 90 triangles. So let's see how much we can remember from that. And 18 is the length of our hypotenuse in that 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if you think back to 30, 60, 90s, this was the layout. It's x, 2x, and x square root of 3. So this 18 is in the 2x position, okay? Which means we would know x, which is sr, would be half of that, which is 9. Okay, so let's write that down, sr. And then because this is a rectangle, we would also know that the top one, qp, would be 9. Okay? And then x square root of 3, that would be these sides here, so PS and QR would be 9 square root of 3. Okay, getting real technical on you there. Let's see if we can get the measure of some of these arcs. If we know that this down here is 30 degrees and this intercepts this arc from Q to P, okay, if this is 30, to get from the angle out to the arc, I would have to double it, so I would know this is 60. So I could say that arc QP is 60 degrees. Okay. And similarly down here, this would have to be 30, and that intercepts arc SR. So that would have to be 30 degrees. No, just kidding. Sorry. What did we just say? If this angle, if this angle is 30, then this is the inscribed angle, and the arc would be double that. So arc SR would have to be 60 degrees. Sorry about that. Um, and we could do the same thing over on the sides here. We could say if this is a 60 degree angle, then this angle intercepts the arc from R to Q. And so I would have to take that 60 and double it. And so my arc QR would be double that 160, which is 120. And same thing over here. This arc RS would go with this 60 degree angle here. So you've got 60 here with this arc. So arc, is that PS? Arc PS would have to be 120. Let's see, is there anything else we could possibly squeeze out of this one? I don't really think so until we started like adding together arcs and things like that. I mean, I guess we could say that arc PR is 180, but I would hope that just from the information given, you'd be able to gather that. So I'm going to say that this list here is good. Okay, 
I will be here early tomorrow morning, probably um, between 7.15 and 7.30. So if you do have any questions before we take the test, you are welcome to come in. You're also welcome to email me tonight with any questions that you have. Good luck.